Wow. Yes, it is. Hmm? It's supposed to be good to be seen. Did you really? Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> We're going now. Issue guys first. Um, I say, sorry. Right foot pad, right before the center of them. Okay. Oh, I want to do this first. Okay. Is it time? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 8th, uh, 2023 meeting of the Pro Board of Directors. It is a workshop. Uh, it's uh, close to six o'clock. Before we get started, uh, you will notice if you come to our meetings regularly that we have several new faces sitting here, some not so new, but one very, very new. So to my left here is Stacy Teitelman. She's the Executive Vice President for Grand Manners. Then we have, excuse me, Demetrius Fair. He's the Vice President for Grand Manners and celebration, so he's Lauren's immediate boss. And then this is Corbin Setti. He's the senior vice president, so he's Lauren's boss's boss, and she's all their boss. <laughs> so we're very happy to have you here today. Happy to be here. Uh, I think you've probably all seen or met at least Jeffrey Webb. He's our new manager. And, of course, we have Lauren, as always. So welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order at 6.01. Okay, do I have a motion to adjust the agenda? I'm going to have a discussion. Okay, Jared. Okay. And Charles. Discuss. I'd like to add uh, pointing the uh, liaison positions for Jim Hayes just quickly before, just at some point during the meeting. Yeah, I can't wait till the next meeting. I mean, I mean, and only because this was supposed to be just a workshop with Brand Manners, and we've already added several things. Yeah, just for continuity of information and consistency and leadership, I feel like we should just, it's three things to just quickly get done. Okay. All righty, so we'll put that, um, we'll put that, I guess really doesn't make a difference. There's the agenda I would ask. Hang on a second, oh, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put that as B. How's that, Jerry? B and C? And then we'll go to the Master Plan Advisory Group Resolution. Um, David? Yeah, with the agenda, since the priority, I believe the reason for this meeting initially was board management company evaluation. I would ask in terms of timing, if, if any of these action items are not completed by 630, that we halt any further discussion with the, media, the board management if we haven't resolved the other items. So I will approve the agenda only with that condition. You made the original portion? Yes, it should be less than that. I'd actually I'd like to move the team Zoom discussion before we have the grand manager discussion just to get all the little business on until next meeting, hopefully. Does that work? Yes, that'll also be quick as well based on technology committee. Okay, great. All righty. Um, we're not pledging regions. All in favor. I know that we're not playing to the edge of the study. You normally don't during your oh, workshop. Okay. Then never mind. Um, all in favor? All right. Anybody uh, opposed? Okay, action items. Appoint two additional members to the Master Plan Advisory Group. We have a motion. I make the motion. We say the name, please. State the names of them, Krista Thompson and Marco Messia. Mm -hmm. Second. Goes Jared. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? All right. Anybody opposed? I recuse myself on for reasons provided in the last few meetings. Or abstain. That's five to five with one abstention. So next item would be the appointment of which one I'll do first, Jared. Technology or sure, technology. Okay. Appoint someone to replace Jim Hayes. Yeah. 
Technology Committee as a liaison. I would put my name in. I like to put my name in also. Ooh. Got two candidates. Anybody want to make a motion for either one or should we just discuss first? I would, I would support uh, Celia. Only because I think Jerry's got a lot of committees already. So does she, but he's got he's got the new startup of the uh, master plan group. Celia. Yeah, so Celia. Oh, I forgot. I don't know. I just think that I would like to be on the technology committee because I don't know much about technology, and they do, and they will carry us through. Jose and his committee. Okay. I'd like to add to what Celia just said. The fact that you don't know a lot about technology, I think, is an asset. I think there's a lot of residents who don't know much about technology, and you can be translational. Celia, I'm talking to you. You, you. you can be translational, and I think that's important because communication, if it's not received, is not received. Don't you have to understand technology to be translational? I'm not understanding that. What does that mean? What is what? What does translational mean? And I, I, oh, interpret it. So if, if you're not a computer geek, um, that you can hear from the technology committee and say, how does this apply? And help me understand it so I can tell residents about it in language they understand. Well, that would be valuable. Because I know it, even reading a lot of stuff that I read, people, uh, especially like, no offense, Lord, her management report, she talks in acronyms. And I don't understand what she's talking about, so I don't know. I could go either way, I guess. But we have a motion from Bill um, to support Celia to the Technology Committee. Do I have a second? Second. More discussion? Charles, Jared? I didn't have extensive technology experience, so I think that's the reason that I should be the liaison. Yeah, I, I don't. Think that there's a good argument for someone joining as a liaison that doesn't have technology experience. That's an argument. I'm, I'm, I'm not making. No, no, he doesn't mean that. He doesn't mean that. So a case. Case. A case. 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 Me, Bill, and David uh, voting for Celia, um, Jared, and Charles opposing. Celia also voting for Celia, so four two. Yes, true. She doesn't count. And then, CD. yes. I'd like to put my name in for CDD. I'll motion for that. Only because I've been somewhat close to the CDD. No. Jared, that's what Jared asked to be added to the agenda. I do it just technology. Technology and CDD. So, Jared, you made a motion for Carl. Carl, you, you put your name in. Jared made a motion. Sure, is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? All righty. I don't know why you would want to go to those meetings, Charles, but God bless you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Charles is our new liaison to the CCDB. We should affirm you as the CJC representative with the transition. Yeah. So, every, so everyone knows when we had our, our um, organizational no meeting back when the new board came on in March. Uh, Jim and David were appointed to the CJC committee, and I was appointed as an alternate, you know, to one not be able to fulfill their service. So um, I will pick up the slack there. So kind of spread everything around evenly. So that works out. Okay. Do we need to vote on that, or is that just? It's a, we did already we did. at the organizational meeting, I believe. In March? We, we did. did. We did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Approval of the updated master plan advisory group resolution. I can summarize quickly. The changes were we removed a 30 day requirement of a town hall because when this document was written, 
there weren't at the holidays of the year in the next 30 days. So uh, that changed. We also made a decision to put uh, a chair and a vice chair on the committee because there are 11 members. So it was um, needing more leadership within the group. And those were the only changes from what we approved previously. Didn't the original, didn't the original, uh, uh, the, the, you be the chair of that committee, Laura? It did. Originally? It did originally, but when, before the meeting, I talked to Jared and Celia because I've been thinking about this for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. The Celebration Hall group and the Communications Advisory group last year worked so well because their chair was there guiding them and they were able to have subgroups and meetings outside of the meeting without relying on management being the one to organize everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we'll still be here providing support and, you know, setting up meetings, doing all that like we did last year, but I just don't think it's for management to chair an advisory group. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it's more mm -hmm. the residents that should be doing that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the updated master plan advisory group. Any more discussion? All in favor? Mm -hmm. Anybody opposed? Abstain. Sir, give it abstain. That's five, two, five, four, and no. Yes, five, four, F O R, and one abstention. Okay, approval of the Island Village 2024 service area budget. Well, second. <clears throat> For the, for the record, uh, Lauren, can you provide any background about why this is now rather than at our board meeting? So the resident, there was no committee for Island Village and we met with the residents a couple of times, but they still had some lingering questions, not fully understanding what certain line items were and where the, the year end was going to come to and what was going to happen next year with the potential of new townhome groupings coming on board. So they just wanted to flesh out the information a little bit more. We had that meeting, they were comfortable with it. So the budget that you have in your packet is the final one. Thank you. We had a motion from Jared, second from Celia. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Uh, last action item, finance committee insurance coverage recommendation. Is there anything in the packet about that? They did not provide their final I didn't see a final there wasn't Andrew tried to get yeah we have to table this why we can't make a motion to table so next so the problem is that the problem is that there's a this needs to be resolved by November 13th so this will have to be but the renewal or is that uh, renewals no, of no. numbers oh, 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 oh this would potentially impact the coverage and this is CJC's last meeting before the end of the year so they didn't provide anything they well, Andrew had the recommendation out. I only saw one or two responses to it. Yeah. Either gonna have to call a special meeting or is that something we can vote online? Because yes. it's we're we just aren't we just affirming what the joint committee says? You're recommending you're recommending to the joint committee. You're not, I mean, because this is truly the joint committee's decision. So I will read what the latest was, and hopefully that's what they recommended when we vote here, and if that vote carries. The, the, the discussion was um, self-insuring things that are less than $30,000, which um, of our assets is $1.1 million, and then we would insure assets that are over $30,000, which is $11 million. So 57% of our assets, we would be self-insuring, meaning if something costs $10,000 and it breaks completely or it gets blown away, we have to pay $10,000 or whatever it costs to replace that. There was, there's no insurance we can file for that. If it is over $30,000, we can file a claim on it. So that is their recommendation for us to self-insure the 57% of our assets under $30,000, and then we will use our insurance and and be insured to cover any assets over $30,000, which is 43% of our assets. Is this the email that was sent out Sunday from Andrew? No, we're, we're chill. There's an email. We don't file things anyway right now, conceivably in those situations. Like if something we're kind of like. We haven't had a claim yeah. since I started. I mean, the 
The town hall damage was a long-standing issue. It wasn't something caused by Ian, so that there wasn't a claim to file there. So, I mean, in two years, um, in two days since I've been here, we haven't need to file a claim. And I would have known back when I worked here. But I, so that goes I back, believe you know. the, the standard has been, if it's reasonable for Crow to afford to replace it and not right. paying your insurance, that's been the practice. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, in case it's not clear, Jerry, the, the reason that they're making this recommendation in case it's not clear is? Is to save money on insurance. Yes. If we're not filing insurance claims, then why are we paying to insure these items? Exactly. Is their argument. So, do, we know what, do we know what the savings is? Or is that still negotiating? With yeah, we don't know that. I guess if I'm at the moment. On the, on the finance committee, sure. Yeah, I, I don't think it was a formal recommendation, but certainly the email traffic, people are in agreement. So what you're hearing from Jared is the proposal. Uh, in that, those items that are un, over under $30,000, there's 21 of them that are over $10,000. So you've got that window in between of 53 items. So it cuts the, the basket back a little bit. One of the other parts of the recommendation was to increase our deductible from five thousand to ten thousand dollars. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah, so that that pulls that together. Okay. The other piece of email traffic was regarding our liability coverage, and we've asked to try to get some information from Grand Manors to look at our liability limits versus other homeowner associations. We haven't received anything, and Jen says she requested it, and nobody's responded. She hasn't got anything yet. On Monday, she said she was going to ask again. We still haven't seen anything. So that's rather important because that represents 70, almost 80% of our premium. So our property premium is small in a relative basis to what our liability coverage is. So that's really where the dollars are. If we're wrong, we don't know. We have no comparison, so we just want that for comparison purposes. So the property is two parts, raise a thing to 10, the deductible to $10,000 and then do those items under $30,000. Sorry to see you there and call you up sooner. I appreciate that. Thank so, you both. So I'll say based on everything I just stated, we'll summarize that in an email to the committee, have them make that recommendation. And then if what I said is correct, we can place a vote based on what I said. Should we table this and should we vote on this tonight? We should vote on this tonight. And if that recommendation is the same and everything is the same, then it is all moving forward. As long as it's consistent with what you just said. Right. right. If anything changes, we can read it. So it's, a, it's an approval in concept. Yes. So I'll amend my motion to approve. So right. how many people are on the finance, Jared? Five? Five, yes. So from the email correspondence, it looks like three of them agreed with whatever Andrew said. Yeah, there was just not a written recommendation. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I have a sense okay. It's it's an agreement from the group. And from what Mike just said. Yeah. yeah. Also accurate. Yes, okay, so we have a motion by Charles. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any more discussion? All in favor? No, just one comment. Thank you to the finance committee for looking for ways of saving money. <laughs> continuing continuing to find ways to save money. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? All righty. Would that mean that Yes, we're going to see the final written part. Do we need to further ratify at the next board at the formal board meeting? Your no. vote is to recommend these changes to the CJC board, which meets on Monday. Okay. No. Do that thing. I'll, I'll see that we get a written yeah. recommendation just to us, and then that will suffice. That would day. be good. If what that comes through good. its email, our yeah, vote yeah, yeah. then will just carry. Yeah. If there's changes, there will be further discussion. Um. So we're done with our action items. Move to the Discussion items, but we're going to bump up Teams versus Zoom. Um, I can speak a little on what they what they were just talking about. Um, the technology committee uh, is meeting right now. They um, they did not get the direction from us to discuss this, so it wasn't something that they had been previously discussing. Um, in discussions there, their general opinion was to use to remain with Teams and use Teams Live if that's necessary for large events, which is Teams Live is a larger for 500 plus people at a meeting. Um, Jose did say that there have been firmware updates that have done, been done to our technology, which was causing some of these issues. Um, there is a new camera here on top of the screen that you can see here. 
one of the other two existing cameras has been replaced. So Jose has done an extensive amount of work with firmware updates and checking settings to see that things are improved. So the committee will have a recommendation by our November 29th board meeting, but they haven't had the chance to discuss it. And also, Jose has done things to improve our current situation. So to be clear, which does firmware, what does firmware updates affect? Both of those platforms? Or is it more about Teams? It's just Teams because we don't have Zoom currently. So okay. got it. Okay. So it was updating firmware in the computer that runs Teams in this room and the cameras and the, the hardware that's here. Okay. We used to have Zoom mm -hmm. when COVID right. We started. implemented it right away, and that, yeah. that may have been the only meeting where we had 125 or something because we had to change our subscription immediately. Mm -hmm. They have also enabled, Jose also enabled a uh, transcript feature. So everything that is said in this meeting is attributed to an individual. And then there's a written copy of every, there's both the video recording and then a, a written like Word document style recording of everything that will be provided at every meeting as well. This is actually the first meeting where that is happening. That's only going forward. They can retroactively got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with all these updates and upgrades and all this good stuff, um, there's a 99.9% .9 probability that we won't run into lost meetings. I wouldn't put a percentage on it, but yes, I think it's a drastically improved. Without needing to switch to a different platform, I think it's drastically improved from where it was. Because it's done a lot of different things to get that. Can you run both at the same time? But they don't intertwine. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, so you cannot run like, both at the same time. Experience would also be horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring out what to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I know Zoom is only two hundred bucks. I thought, wow, if we can have like two, We'd then have if one failed, then the other one would pick it up. Right. The camera's going to get multiple channels. Okay. Yeah. Twice the cameras. Twice. Two different places to log in. Two different login Okay. So Celia, this. We'll go with you for the updates for the next meeting. Great. But basically, we're not making any changes there because we're already with Tim. Okay. Um, I mean, this. Uh, there's not a section here for uh, comments from residents, but uh, we will take them before we start the discussion on the evaluation. I see Gary, you signed up to say something. Oh, wait. I, we're not going to take it. I, it's a workshop. I know, but during the discussion, because this is, I would like to see this run like a true evaluation. Yes. So I want it to be an open discussion between the board and management. If we have time afterwards, you know, you can certainly make a comment, but as the discussion is, is going on, I would rather it just be between the board and management. As I said, I'll wait till afterwards. Okay. Before you dig in, can I just I just want to make a comment that sure. um, what you're about to see differs a little bit from uh, what I initially had put together. It removes the action plan, some next steps, and some verbatims, uh, which I assume we were including in this. So uh, some of that has been removed uh, uh, based on board feedback. So I just want that on the record. Yeah, I was going to mention that as well. Um, there's another name on here. Is it Virginia Barr? Let's be okay. Well, there was there's kind of like a little mark in the first thing, so I wasn't sure. Oh, okay. So you don't want. I need to. I just thought okay. No, no, that's okay. I just couldn't tell if you had checked it or not, and I just didn't no. want to be looked up. Anybody online? No. Okay. Okay. So um. So we do have a slide presentation. As Charles is correct. There were 20, had 45 slides, um, which was quite a bit. So uh, I talked to several board members. We didn't want the whole presentation to be taken up with slides. We want to have enough time, you know, for some good conversation between the board and management on some of the issues that came up both in the board uh, evaluation and the residential um, uh, survey. So. The other thing is, um, I re he's right that I took the captions and stuff because I think I would like, just like when you review a real an employee as they are ours, you know, you tell them the things you're doing well, 
the things that uh, they're doing just out of this world, the opportunities for improvement, and then you work together to solve the issue. Okay, so that's what I would like to see happen here today. Um, but before we get started with the slide presentation, I would like to let Stacy make an opening comment if she would like, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Cindy. Should I? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Never know how it's perfect. Working. Perfect. Well, thank you. Of course, uh, good evening to everybody here in the room, to the board members, of course, and everybody who's online. Uh, we really are very appreciative and we thank you for inviting us to this workshop and having this opportunity to have this conversation. Uh, as just an opening comment, it, it we, we are incredibly thankful to all of the board members, the committee, community members, affiliated celebration entities, and all the organization members who are community volunteers. Uh, you all are selflessly giving of your own time and you all also have provided us with your candid feedback along the way. Uh, and we're grateful for this current survey and for everybody who did participate in it to provide their feedback. Uh, as, as I reflected on today's meeting and the past two years, really, um, today's purpose and exercise, I wanted to recount our journey with celebration for everyone, just to kind of set the stage for, for what we're about to embark on in terms of having this conversation. And, and perhaps there might there might be some folks in the room and some folks online that, that don't have that history. So I thought it was good to open up with, with this. So in, in 2021, when we were presented with the opportunity to participate in the RFP process to manage celebration, our, and I was a part of the organization at that time. Uh, so I'm speaking from a, a, very, a very personal place here as well. Our entire company was enthralled with the idea that we could be awarded such an honor. It would be the most significant opportunity our company had been presented with in almost its 20 year history. We all knew how special celebration was but the day we toured the community with the board and Gary Hutzpeth, who's here in the room, I remember that day as clear as clear as, as crystal uh, and how excited uh, we were all are and how it illuminated how exceptional this community was to us and the board and of course the RFP committee. The team afterwards could not stop talking about how it went and how excited we were about being a part of this iconic community. Our leadership team, including myself, has over 150 years of collective property management experience and expertise. Before RealManage, uh, quite a few of us worked with the largest property management companies in our industry. And the opportunity to manage celebration was absolutely exhilarating for us. We soon learned we had been selected as one of the three finalists from 250 other property management companies. Nothing was more important to our company than demonstrating that we were the ideal property management partner for the celebration community. Grand Manners is the lifestyle division of Real Manage that provides a high touch experience to unique communities like celebration across the country. Real Manage is the third largest property management company in the country, and we manage over 3,000 communities across 20 states, with 1,000 of those communities in Florida. When we were invited to present to the board, committee, and community members as a symbol of our commitment and unwavering interest, we had every single one of our department leaders and several key company owners present for that meeting. For anyone in this room that was there, you were a part of it. We had this entire table filled and even folks on Zoom participating in that very important meeting. This was the first of many gestures toward the investment we would make in ensuring and demonstrating the importance of the celebration community by everyone in our company. Then the most momentous day came when we received the news that the board unanimously voted to hire Grand Manners. I'm personally getting goosebumps right now just saying that. It, it really was quite a day. We could hear cheers across our entire company and our gratitude for this opportunity was immeasurable. Couldn't even imagine. 
We quickly set up camp in an off-site location to begin the transition and immersion meetings with the community board, celebration founders, and various committee members. We knew there was a lot of work to be done given the previous management company was in place for over 20 years. There is no question we were up for the task. Our first priority was hiring an executive director and embracing the town hall team into our real manager and grand manager's family. And after an extensive search and interviews, we hired Lauren. And we're very grateful for everything she's done with the staff and for the community over the past two years. It is actually Lauren's two year anniversary in two days. Right, we, are, we were talking about that at dinner. Earlier, I mentioned our company's commitment and investment in the town hall team, board, and community. To this end, we invested $50,000 in sign-on bonuses for the town hall team members. We wanted them to know just how special they were and how important it was to keep those team members and all their information with the community intact. We also provided one of our vice presidents to serve as the interim executive director and transition leader while we searched for the executive director position. Then we requested all the information from the previous management company to set up Serenet, our proprietary software, and provided training and orientation to our staff and the board. The transition would take place just short of over two months. It was quite a feat for us to do that. We initially thought of a six month runway and we made it happen in just two months with all of that 20 year history and getting the team on board and working with the board to make a successful transition. Throughout our two year relationship, many hours have been provided and spent by our Serenet business enablement support team, community manager success group, the Grand Manor's leadership and company executives providing continuous support, ongoing training, workshops with the board, and working through Serenet solutions to help serve this community. This was all at no additional cost. It was on our cost, our dime, and at our pleasure. The reason we all got into this business is to be community servants. We are honored and remain deeply committed to partnering with the Celebration Board, affiliated organizations, and the community. We look forward to working together on continuous improvements after hearing tonight's results and feedback and having a longstanding relationship for many more years to come. Uh, heartfelt gratitude and thank you uh, to the board here uh, and everybody, all the community members uh, from, from the Grand Manners team to all of you. We appreciate it very much to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and you even started, I was listening to what you were saying, you even started two months early because originally we, the uh, target date was January 1st. Correct. And we said, you start sooner. And so they did, you know, they revved up as best they could to come on board to try to, I'll use the word, bail us out of the situation uh, we were in at the time, um, mostly revolving on the, around the fact that we didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have current financials. They were like three months behind because the previous management company, you know, I think it was in March, change their system for accounting and everything got messed up. So, I mean, they took on a, a yeoman's job and early too. So thank you for those comments. Um, and just for everybody's information, um, Bill here was on the task force for the, R the original RFP, correct? Don't make me do it again. No, no. Um, David was the only meeting board member that was part of all this process. He was the leader. Celia. Yeah. He well, no, he was before yeah. us. Oh, yeah. And then Celia and I came on just, just as we were getting ready to make a decision. Um, Jared and um, Charles are new, so of course they don't have this history. Um, no, I'd like, like to add that Carrie was our, oh, was our acting grown-up. Acting grown-up? Yeah. And he still is. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started with the slides. We're going to start with a board evaluation first. I hear myself. Yeah. Okay. So the Coral Performance Evaluation of Grand Manners. Uh, we had two separate evaluations, one that the board did based on the RFP statement of work, which is referred to as an SOW in uh, the slides that follow. Uh, and then we also did a community survey, which was 
to the owners online. There were 13 questions. It was voluntary participation. Uh, it was done, I believe, by SurveyMonkey. Uh, SurveyMonkey accumulates everything, so there was nobody here actually counting votes and looking at who said what and all that kind of stuff. It was all automated. Boom, and we got it. So that's how we got our two um, surveys done. Uh, Gary was kind enough to put the management survey together for us, um, which was a feat in itself. Okay, so the Crow Board Performance Evaluation of Grand Manners. Uh, we did it in uh, July of 2023, which was a little over halfway, 21 months through the 36 month initial contract term. Um, it was evaluated by seven, seven board members. There were 10 categories, but there were 141 elements in the statement of work. So we, we evaluated them actually on 141 different items in 10 categories. Uh, using the same uh, SOW cell elements provided continuity between the SOW's duties and the evaluation. So in other words, what we were trying to do was match up what they were told we would expect of them with how they're doing, which makes perfect sense. Um, so the five point scale we used, uh, one would equal performance below SAL, performance net SAL was number three, and five was the high end, exceeded performance. Two and four were in the middle there. Evaluation results are averages of board member scores, board member comments uh, were compiled anonymously. So we saw the comments that each of us made, but we didn't know who made the comments. So again, there were 141 elements, 104 of them scored as met or exceeded, so three, four, or five, and then 37 scored below, which would be um, two or one. Can I just make a comment on this slide? Sure. Um, it's important to notice that this, from a data analysis perspective, in my opinion, this is not an accurate representation of these scores because met scope of work is lumped in with exceeded. So the numbers are inflated based on, if you're looking at good, average, bad, this does not reflect that. This reflects good and average together and bad separately. So I just want to make that statement because that carries through the rest of this presentation. And so it is skewed based on adding more data to the good category. Okay. I'll get that. It's either well, good he, or exceeded. They met or exceeded. You, but, I, but what? It's what, scored a three, four, or five. Yes. Uh, Jared's point is, if you include the three, mm -hmm. then that inflates that number. I well, they met. I agree with Celia. Yeah. They met. It includes the yeah. three. It includes the three. Uh, and I just will say that this slide here is part of uh, part of the presentation that Gary suggested uh, when he put everything together mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, this came. This came. This great. came from Gary. So, um, thank you, Jerry. But thank you for your comment, Jerry. So that is, this includes three, four, and five, and then on the other end, two and one. Okay. Uh, the next one is the next slide is a just kind of a going down the ten different categories: general operations, support, personnel, and staffing, finance, physical asset management, custodian of records, communications, contract procurement, meeting reports. Uh, meeting support, I'm sorry, committee support and community recreation and lifestyle support. Uh, the first column where it says total of elements, that means that, for instance, under general operating support, there were 34 different statements that we rated them on. Of that 34, 30 met or exceeded SOW and four, again, scored below. The average for that section was 3.3 and down the line. Uh, personnel, there were nine items that we rated for an average of 3.3. Finance, there were 22 different statements. The average on that is 2.9. When you take the seven count, you know, each seven board members and average it out. Physical asset management, there were 13 individual items. They averaged 3.1. Custodian of records, there were 14. 
communications, there were seven items in communications. Those averaged 3.3. Contract procurement and oversight, there were 16 different items. One, this is a, that's why this is highlighted. One uh, rated that it at least met the requirements. The other 15 scored below requirements. So this is a, a, a kind of an important line. And you see the overall score is 2.6, which is under the uh, meeting support we uh, rated. Four committee support. There were seven items. Came to 3.0 average. And community recreation and lifestyle support. There were 11 items, and they averaged to 3.2. Just sorry. Go ahead, Charles. Oh, so I, I assume everyone can. Yeah, can everybody sort, can sort through this, but. Obviously, when, when you think about seven people, so one of two things happened. Either everyone put it right down the middle at three or, or two, or there were two extremes, five or one, and, and met in three. So obviously, you know, people can, can figure that out on their own, but that's obviously a couple of scenarios that could have happened there. Anything else? Okay. Anybody? Okay. Next. So then I took the each category and listed the elements that scored above three and also anyone that scored two or less. So for general operations support, again, there were 34 elements. I don't know that I have to. Do you want me to read all of them? Can all of you see this? Do you want me to read it? Okay. It's important. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. So, serve the associ service the association's primary point of contact. That's a 3.7. These are averages. Plan and implement emergency response procedures, 3.8. Orientation slash training of board and committee members, 3.6. Review and respond to routine correspondence, 3.7. Maintain business-like relations with property owners and tenants, 3.6. Recommend efficiencies and improvements to the board, 3.6. Maintain up-to-date new resident packet, 3.5. Liaison between CROAS, consultants, committee chairs, et cetera, 3.6. Promptly investigate accident damage, claims of damage, 3.6. Manage elections for board and committees, 3.6. Participate, support any litigation or dispute settlement activities, 3.7. Manage inventory and sale of celebration merchandise, 3.7. Because I thought of this as a, as like a line graph, with three being the middle, I, um, it was suggested that we start at 3.5 for the, the plus side. But I started, when I did my analysis, I started at 2.5 and below, because to Jared's point, I thought that that would even it up a little bit. In this particular case, there was no, um, element that scored below 2.5 or below. Next is personnel and staffing elements. There were nine of those total. Uh, provide on-site IT support, that got a 4.0. Uh, meeting setup, removal of tables, chairs, audio, visual stuff, 3.7. And then provide the ability to handle after hours emergency, 3.7. And again, there was no score, uh, 2.5. 2.5 or less. Communications and public relations. There were seven elements in this one, this section. One, foster open lines of communication within the community, scored a 3.6. And again, none, 2.5 or less. Where are the, where is the 2.5 to 3.5? Just out of curiosity. Where is it? Where is it? Are we going through those as well? Or where? No. No, because I was trying to reduce the slides from 45 to 25. Okay, so those are not in here. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can, I do want to know the others. I have the report here. They're right there. There's one right there for G. Well, no, he's talking about like communications. No, I'm just saying. Just in general. I'm just saying on this, these slides, we're capturing 2.5 or less and 3.5 or greater. We're not calling out what's between 2.5. Well, let me give this one. There's only seven here, so let me. Just for community knowledge. To the larger point, the 3.3 represents everything. 
average, correct? So it's 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 from one to five. It's it's everything. So only one of this. The other way of saying that is only one of the seven is showing here. Um, but it's still three point three overall. Yeah, the other scores in this in this particular category, Charles, mm -hmm. to your point, were three point three, three point two, three point three, three point three, three point zero, and three point three. Okay, there were no nothing under three in this particular category. No, I have that right here. I guess the other point here, if I may, is that we're looking at these ten clusters at a high level. You know, we have a 20 or 30 page report from 30 page, 31 page report from Gary. But we're looking at what we're doing here in these slides is high level. Is that, is that a fair statement? Snapshots. And we intend to provide the details, correct? Not tonight, but. I think that. Grand manner. Let's say a 2.75 doesn't meet statement of work and how do you action plan? Where do we where so we're going to capture those later on the 2.75 or so we're not no they're not anywhere okay so and in, in this no, which, which implies we did not dead. which we did not so 2.75 does not meet statement of work right it's not captured here and is not being action right but does neither is the 3.0 which meets statement of work which doesn't need an action plan anything under 3.0 does not meet statement of work and we need an action plan conceivably right but we're not analyzing data that way <laughs> Carry on. I'm sorry. I just okay, wanted. No okay. Um, G. Contact procurement oversight supervision. So so far, I've been saying you know two point five and under none. In this one, score three point five or greater, that would be a none. So the board recognized that there is improvement needed in this category. Um, lines that scored two point five or less. For effective, efficient contract procurement, that got 2.3. Uh, execute contract procurement procedure for all projects, 2.4. Negotiate, prepare, review, execute contracts and compliance, 2.4. Recruit new vendors and suppliers, 2.5. Obtain a minimum of three detailed bids for projects greater than $10,000, 2.5. Monitor all work performed by third parties, schedules, terms, et cetera, 2.5. Verify all terms of contracts are satisfied prior to final payment, 2.4. Ensure association satisfaction with all goods and services prior to final payments. Oh, and to be clear, this, this survey was done in July, right? Correct. What is our evaluation? Again? Our evaluation. Yeah, this was done in July. Mm -hmm. But there's obviously an issue here. Okay. Um, Meeting support elements. On the high end, attend all board meetings, 3.9. Prepare agenda and board book, 3.8. Preparation and support for annual members meeting, 3.6. Prepare, prepare recent monthly reports, financials, contractual, et cetera, 3.6. Making score two point less, there were none. Yes. Community recreation lifestyle, uh, 3.5 or Greater coordinate, plan, organize, schedule, et cetera, all events, 3.7. Develop promotional strategies for sponsorships and revenue, 3.6. And again, anything 2.5 or less, there were none. This last slide, there were four different categories where they didn't, they, there was a low of 2.6, like in the first one here, finance, accounting, and cash management. The scores ranged from a low of 2.6 to a high of 3.5. So there's nothing exceptional. There was nothing, anything horrible either, is what this is telling you. Physical asset management, there are 13 elements, ranged from 2.7 to 3.3. Custodian of records, uh, element scores ranging from low of 2.7 to 3.2. And committee support elements, from a low of 2.9 to a high of 3.1. So I guess that kind of addresses part of your question there, Charles. So in these four categories, everything was very tight in the middle. Okay. But, so, but it wasn't because each one of these categories, each one of these categories had something that was below scope of work. 
Correct. Just to clarify. Right. I know it's all green. I know, know we're saying it is all fine <clears throat> because there's a 3.1, a 3.0, and a 3.0. Each one of these categories had elements that were below scope of work. In fact, finance had a very high number that was below scope of work. And, and I just drew a graph one through five, and I was looking at three and four and two, and that entire area between 2.5 and three. Again, I just, I, I'm struggling with this. Well, this. This was prepared very differently than Mr. And the reason, the, the reason this, these slides started out with, no, no well, not in my mind. These sites, this, this series of slides, and there were like 15 of them, started out with capturing everything 3.5 and above as good and anything 2.9 as bad. So in or in order to make it more of a, 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 a to bring some equality to it, because that takes out the, the, the center, what I guess you could call a gray area, because those could have gone either way because they're close to the three. But they didn't. They were clearly in the meat scope of work. 3.1. No, 3.5 it started. The, and, but I'm saying a 3.1, a 3.0, or 3.3, they're all. So again, what I did was I started with the 3.5 that was originally started, which I didn't have a, it wasn't a part of my thought process. And then just, just to make it equal and not to have, I was trying to reduce the slides from 35 to, from 35 or 45 down. We would have included everything it would have made it much more probably. You can address the time. But Carrie, I'm sorry, I won't answer it. I won't ask it. Um, so my thought was that based on what we've shared right now, Jared, maybe maybe you want to start. Um, just any comments, if you have any direct questions, comments, concerns, um, anything in particular that you feel that management needs to improve on that maybe wasn't captured here, um, please. Um, I need to say that I, 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 and I said this in emails to the board, I disagree with the, how this data is laid out and it is very manipulated to a biased position in my opinion. I disagree with how this, this, these results are provided to the community. Um, with regard to the question, I think that my biggest concerns are, are contract management, um, accuracy of information and accountability. Uh, those are the things that I think need most improvement. And I've, I've been vocal about all of my opinions and all of my concerns the whole time. So I don't have anything new to say that I feel brand management is not aware. Have you talked to them? I mean, you've got the, when you say, when you say grand manners, who, who are you, who do you mean? Because this is the first time that, that Stacy and Metrius and, um, Corbin have been here. I know we've had conversations with Lauren and you know Jeff most recently, but I've shared emails with them. With these with Stacy? Not with Matrius. No, I have I haven't shared emails with Matrius. I just met them two weeks ago. Do you have do you, you look close? Well, uh, here, well, here's the thing. I get 300 emails a day, right? So not that Jared's are, are not important. Uh, that that said, though, I think it would be a really helpful uh, to get the commentary from the results because then we can see the the verbatim and what we can action on. Uh, because these are very these are very important categories that you're mentioning, and I would need to hear the the examples, specific examples, to address those right here and now. Now again, I I like the presentation just as a comment. There, but those have been scrubbed. So that that would be a great next step for us to be able to right to see those comments, and then we can address them very specifically. Sure, I can say the fact that we have a lien on one of our properties that was under grand management's negligence is a very high concern for me. Um, so you can write that down as a very top priority because I know the residents feel the same way. Um. I think that not having proper contracts, not even having any contracts on certain projects is a very big concern for me. Um, improper bids, 
and having us vote on things that are incomplete is unacceptable to me. Um, not getting three bids on things uh, per our contract and our requirements of, of how we operate is a concern. Um, referring unlicensed contractors on projects, that is a concern. Um, general mismanagement of projects, that is a concern. Are you talking about all? Pro your, uh, I can be as specific. Well, as, I mean, as, like. as far as um, when you say contracts, yes, are you, you're you're thinking mm -hmm. primarily of all contracts that we enter as a community. Okay, so everything. I'm not saying mm -hmm. all of them are bad, but enough of them. I've had to in board meetings publicly point out where contracts are incorrect or documents are incorrect. It should not make it to the board level. For, for the speech that you gave of how amazing Grand Manners is, it should not make it to this table that we have things that are incomplete. I agree with you. I've been pointing those out since April. Okay. Lauren, do we have any particular feedback to that remark that we're providing incomplete? So well, I can say that the and it still falls back on me that the individual that was prepping the board packet was not vetting everything prior to putting it in. It still should have been caught by me before it went to the board. So we've put additional steps in place to stop that from happening. Um, Tom's reviewing everything before it goes to the board packet. Now. I do want to preface that because I know that this may seem like a this is my statements are not towards an individual. I don't particularly have an excellent relationship with Lauren, but I also don't feel Lauren, while she is the primarily responsible person, my statements are not because at the end we could say, well, it's all Lauren's fault. She's the executive director. That is not what I am saying. I'm making statements to grand managers as a management company. These are the things that should not be happening that I'm seeing that are happening. So yeah. I just to be clear on that with Lauren. Sure. sure. And thank you. And that I mean that's very fair. Absolutely. We we are one team at this table. That's how we look at it as well. And, and some of the non-contract business wasn't Grand Nanner's fault either. What? Some of the no-contract business. They, I don't understand what you're saying. Who, who well, else first, writes contracts for us then? They were told in some instances by right. the person who signed them at the time that a contract was no, not No, no, no. I'm talking about since I've been on the board, so that would be you. Oh, no, no. We have, we have contract services I've been here. No, we, we don't, though. We don't. There are times where things came to the board for a vote and there was no contract. We were signing quotes. So that is not a true statement. That's in March? It's in yes. April? Yes. In fact, I remember a particular incident about uh, the website where you all were very upset with me that I wouldn't approve unanimously a $20,000 expense on a website, it's only to find out that $12,000 was a that it <laughs> That it was just a quote and there were no, we had to pay all of it up front and there was no timeline and when it was supposed to be done. And, and, and there was a unanimous vote on that, except for me. And because they didn't say anything, it stopped and everybody was very upset. But we were able to discover that it was a very open ended. That's just one example. I can go through all of them if you need more. Yeah. I, I also oppose that just as a, it, but I, you're right. And the spirit of what you're saying is we seem to be applying very loose objective and even the three bid uh, you know with the landscaping it seems like it's out of convenience at times uh, it's not consistent across the board and it's always just something else it's it's just very we're doing it this way because we can't find vendors or we can't i, I don't know it's very very inconsistent very sloppy um really disappointing i think in a lot of ways and we're seeing it for now you know, the playgrounds in the landscaping in the vendors, in the pools. So, I mean, the, all of this stuff, and it's just really not, you know, again, Stacey, I appreciate your comments, but I really expect more. And, and I'm not arguing no. the apps, I'm, I'm on board. If I'm, I'm putting myself in your shoes, I feel I would feel the same exact way. I just have more questions than I have answers right now uh, because this is the first time we're seeing this feedback. Not like I, 
I had some insight to be really prepared. So, and I think right? that, that's part of the larger problem. I think there's there's a corporate disconnect between, you know, Lauren here is our local management can only do so much. There's a lot of corporate, you know, whether it be the billing with the changing with the banks, whether it be Sirenet problems, there seems to be some gap between the local management and corporate, whether there's no corporate support, whether there's just someone who doesn't have responsibility for the account. I don't know what's going on, but there is just some level of not support happening here locally from Grain Manners. And that's a major part of that, honestly. When you look at everything systemically, that seems to be going right back to corporate. I don't know what it is. I would have to sit down with Lauren and really run through those things because Lauren and I talk weekly um, I know Corbin and Lauren talk often, and now Mitris, of course, is new to to the equation. Um, so we are, again, it, it's opinion, and yeah. you know, at this point, but we do speak to Lauren every week, and we have get conversations about all kinds of things that are needed. So again, not not arguing no, your no, point no. because it's a hundred percent valid. Uh, but there maybe there are other opportunities for us uh, on things that we we could do differently and better. I just don't know the details to address them. In terms of, uh, and this is just my overarching experience comment back with respect to contracts is, and I, I don't know the answer, so I will need Lauren to help with this, but do we have a policy set where there's a value, a contract value or a, you know, yes. that necessitates? Yes. yes. Okay. I just, again, this is sometimes it's basic things that we, we overlook. So, then in that case, we have to adhere to that policy. That is absolutely our responsibility to do that. Well, the, to Jerry's point, they don't put the, I've, I signed a lot of contracts. They don't put the contracts in the board packet. They put the proposals in the board packet, mm -hmm. and then they make, then you create the contract. That had been the practice before we were switching that. So now we're trying to start including the contract and all of that in the board packet. So even though it didn't appear in the board packet, I had been signing actual contracts. I, I, okay. but that's One, I don't be fully accurate. And also I okay. do want to say that this, the, the tone that I'm speaking with to grant managers, I need it to be clear and do it as well. It's because I need, I was asked what my opinion was and I'm providing you that's this. Fine. Mm -hmm. I feel that um, Cindy is, everything I say, she has a defense for grand manners. And so I'm trying to speak in a way that it makes it clear that a lien on our properties is an unexcusable offense, for example, of my examples. And so um, with the excuses that my fellow board member is giving on your behalf, I, I, I need to speak at the tone that I'm speaking with so it's heard. It's, sure. it's sure. perfectly fine, Jared. We're, we're perfectly fine with that. The lien, though, on the property, is this in respect to... Playground. Okay. And, and that lien was effectuated... I mean, I just, again, for clarity purposes, the agreement for work with Phoenix was terminated uh, by vote of the board, um, and Phoenix Works took that step um, to protect themselves, I'm okay. assuming, to, okay. in attempts to get additional funds. Okay. Was the board aware that from that action, a lien would be placed? I believe Tom expressed that that was one yeah. possibility. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So it sounds like there was awareness that that would be the ramification should that decision be made, right? And I mean, I, I, that's that's a tough, uh, yeah, again, that's a tough situation. And so I, I think that would have been a collective call on between management and the board uh, because we can't effectuate decisioning without the board making those approvals um, at the board meeting. So that sounds like it could have been avoided yet collective at the same time. Yes, there was 14 months of action that could have happened prior to that to prevent us from getting it. Right. I agree with that. I understand that. I understand that. So, okay. So, um, is, and, is that like to what Charles was saying about the landscaping and the pools and like how many landscaping companies have we gone through, Lauren? Through no fault of Grand Manors. Um, when I first started here, it was Yellowstone, New Leaf, and Exquisite were our main ones. Yellowstone was terminated by the board. Mm -hmm. Then it was New Leaf and Exquisite. Then it was Benchmark and Exquisite. Mm -hmm. 
and Benchmark was terminated by the board. Right. And now it's Princeton Sons AES uh, Exquisite. I think those are the three. Major. And how many how many landscaping companies says say Rose sent out for RFPs for the service areas that nobody responds or nobody wants to do? For the service areas, we sent out 22. We sent out RFPs to 22 companies. Mm -hmm. 16 of those came in person to the to a question and answer period. Mm -hmm. And uh, a total of four responded to the majority of them, but only three responded to some of them. So how is that? So how is that? Corporate's fault that we can't find the landscaper that wants to work in celebration. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you mentioned that we should get three bids or more. She can't even get a land. That's a, that's a right. contractual obligation. I understand that, but she can't even. Have you read the contract? Yes. She, okay. Yeah, it was part of the whole thing. Okay. But she can't get enough people. That's an excuse. Not an excuse. CCMC. When you we're pointing the fingers at CCMC, we're pointing the fingers at CCMC. When you want to fire your landscaper, mm -hmm. you will look for another landscaper. Mm -hmm. How many service areas are there? Sixteen. Yeah. And how many pass? Yeah. Yeah. This right. process with the service. Those area. all existed. Those all existed, correct? When you came in. Right, all those passive parks, yes. all those amenities. Right. So you knew what and was needed. Exactly. And there was nothing taken care of. Why was it not taken? Because the management company didn't take because care of it. Because we let management manage, right? That's what we do. We let management Charles, manage. Charles, when I got on the board in 2021, I got on the board and there was mm -hmm. this RFP going on and there was, we went to all the parks. We, 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 toward all the parts. Nothing Good. was done. Okay. Nothing. And nothing is still done. Yes, it is. You no. go to Founders no. Park. Did you read the community survey? Did you read the feedback? Yes, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. I did. Because I read something very different. Because I read the same thing. Okay. Guys, this what's happening is what I was hoping would not happen. That's okay. So, We're having a healthy conversation. No, but I would I would like I would like everybody to be able to to share their opinions with Grand Manners without us discussing amongst ourselves who's at fault, who's not at fault. Okay. Um, and just before, Charles, mm -hmm. I'll get back to you because you started uh, your comments. But I did find the report that shows, because you were saying about the, there's no, um, between that that uh, 2.5 and 2.9, just so you know, uh, general operating support, there were four. And that there were four, 2.9 and below, four items. For personal staffing, there was one. For finance, cash, and accounting, there were nine. For personal staffing, there were four. I'm looking at your presentation on slide number Right, eight. but you, you were questioning, what I'm giving you is the number of anything that was 2.9 and below. Correct. So, for personnel and staffing, it was four, according to this presentation. Yes. So there, were, so there were four. There was personal steps. No, wait. One. There's one. Can we go back to slide eight? Hold on. Personal. Number of elements scored as performance below four. Yeah. Right. So that number. There were there were no numbers below 2.5. So then anything under, so four is the number of items that were 2.6 and above, because you that's what you were questioning. 2.6 to 2.9. Yes. yes. So it's there. You said there was one, so I would say there are four. It's it's one. Section B is one element right. below 3.0. Right. That's not what this says. Okay, so this is what I'm I'm just trying to understand the data. 
Yeah. You're okay. saying there's one. She's saying there's one. This slide four. Okay. It was manipulated. It was manipulated. I agree. Okay. Um, well, from, not fine. No. What is the answer to the question here? This says there are four. You say there's one. I'm looking at the report, the original report that we got. It needs to be adjusted. So there were four. Tell oh, the story we want to hear. Are you looking at yeah, this I'm, right here? Yeah, this is what they're talking about. I know. I'm looking at personnel it. staffing. Total of elements nine, mm -hmm. eight met or exceeded the so. One was below the average section score three point three. Is that what you're questioning, Jared? Yes. Are you looking at what you just read? Is not what was just shared with the community. It's right on. It's right on the screen. I cannot okay. argue this any more than what is in front of our eyes. Now, none should have a number one there. Right. That, that's no. what I'm... When you go to the raw data, yeah. there is one 2.6. So there is there are okay. zero below 2.5. There's one at 2.6. You have to total nine. Now we've accounted for four. That means the remaining are between three and 3.5. This is accurate data. It doesn't tell the whole story. The whole story is this, but this also had Gary's report. This also has challenges, which I have not addressed yet. Um, oh, anyway, Charles, did you have anything else to address to Grand Manners? And please let's not really try to discuss amongst ourselves. Okay, Charles, did you have anything else to discuss? Any, at least one of your terms, pain points? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah, yeah, David. Yeah, let, let me make several comments. I'm very thankful, Gary and Bill, for your work a, a couple of years ago. Seems like yesterday, but a couple of years ago. I'm very thankful to Gary for pulling this together 30 pages. This is only a starting point. Pardon me, no disrespect. It is not the truth. It is very healthy. It's, it is truthful, but it's not the whole story. For example, and I, you've never said it was, it's a good starting point for discussion. The comments are helpful. Summaries are summary and they hide the rest of the story. Out of a hundred, well, and, and at the beginning, Cindy said there's 129 elements. There are eight not included. That's not Kanoa. That's Kanoa. That's why we're not dealing with them. Not for omission, just not, not our territory, but part of management's territory. Of the 141 items, 13 have a spread of three or more. Out of four, you can have a spread of five. There are two items here that I found, I may have miscounted, where the spread, someone said one and someone said five. Obviously, we have different points of view of that particular item out of 141. 13 out of 141 have a spread of three or more. That's significant. Also, this was done in July. I might redo this different today for two reasons. One is I have a different viewpoint today. Part of that is infused by resident comments, and part of it is four months or whatever it is have elapsed. The other is something called regression to the mean, but we're not going there right now. That's being consistent with yourself with the same question, you know, minutes apart. You might have a three or a four or a four versus a five. The other thing that's that's important, and I don't know that Gary did this and it'd be a lot of work to do is some of us grade higher and some of us grade lower. So my all of my scores might average on 141 items 4.1 and all of someone else's might average 1.2. That's important to know as we look at this. The data is a starting point for conversation. It's a starting point. When we talk about oh at the bottom, I'm sorry, not the bottom, at the End of the day, when we talk about actionable items, anything below a three, sure, is actionable items. I would argue that 
I don't like a 3.1 or 3.5. I think something that's a four. I, I think you would aspire to, a, I would hope, you would aspire to a five, a unanimous five across the board. I think, I, it, but some items that are lower warrant greater attention. There are other items that are hidden in a in a score of 2.3. So this is a personal item of mine, a score of uh, 2.6, pardon me, uh, is hidden in here. And that's one of the most important things and it bugs the whatever out of me. And it's the most important thing to bring people to celebration. Yes, yeah, the community, yes, yeah, the activities, yes, yeah, where we are and our history, but it's also how things look. And look is translated in our contract item in general operational support item 13. That's covenants. I think that's that's vital. That's vital. It's not just quarterly inspections. It's let's keep our community looking good. And that's that doesn't show in any of this. So there's data, there's information that is buried. And I don't mean hidden from public view. It's here, but what's the rest of the story? What can we do about that? A comment about corporate. I know there have been several rub points for Lauren and the staff over the last couple of years, but I will say having serving now on my seventh year on the board, um, I see more corporate support than I've ever seen than with a prior management company. I see more corporate involvement than with a prior management company. I am grateful for corporate. I don't know corporate. Met one today and re-met another, a couple others, uh, another uh, now. But um, I, and I also see, uh, my view is that we've had rub points and we've gotten many of them resolved. I wish it wasn't so hard for, Lauren, to get a lot of these resolved, but you've gotten them resolved to the community, to our general community, I don't want to say satisfaction, but working better for us. There's a lot of uniqueness in, in celebration. Um, and the corporate, the standard mold for however, however many communities you have may not apply here. And, and, and so we have to negotiate that. But I think all of this becomes um, talking points for us. But I am appreciative of a the greater corporate involvement that, that I then 10 times greater than I ever saw in those other five years. Uh, and then second, I'm grateful for the flexibility that has happened. Now there may be other rub points and there's plenty more to do, but uh, so my general take is this is a starting point for discussion. Um, Stacy, you said two month transition. No, transition is actually still happening because I know from the last month that multiple things are still get or, or new, new things are still getting uncovered that just weren't dealt with over the years prior to your arrival. So transition has been a long piece and we want to get it right. We want to get it. We want to get it perfect. So that would be my take. Thanks, David. Celio? Bill could go next. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree with what David said, that this data that we're looking at now is a roll-up of a lot of other data. And I feel that everything we know that has been, whether it's resident comments, a resident uh, voting, which uh, I would have hoped more residents would have voted, uh, and certainly how the board voted, I think are all materials that we should share with you so you know what we know because uh, we can't ask you to respond to a a hidden complaint you know you, you need to know what people think and i and i am pretty sure that's what you want as well so i would hope that we get that all to you uh the data that we voted uh, was completely hidden from uh, gary we gave him sealed envelopes and we didn't sign them, so he doesn't know how I voted. He doesn't know how Cindy voted. Uh, so we tried to keep it as, as uh, above board as as possible. As far as the contracts go, I'm, I'm pretty critical of that as well. Think the ball has been dropped uh, on a lot of things, uh, and certainly as far as the board packages and other 
communications. At a higher level, I would say that there's a lack of quality control sometimes. Has it gotten better? Yes. But even if even getting down to syntax and typos sometimes in the board package and other uh, official announcements, uh, it's just that it needs another read sometimes. Uh, not that it's crucial, it's just, to me, it's a level of professionalism. Uh, having worked in this field all my life, you know, we, companies I work with, we pride ourselves on not making those mistakes. Uh, they're little things, but they reflect. Uh, as far as the contracts go, I think that you have picked up and done a lot. Uh, I know that Jackson is not a popular name to mention here, but we got a lot of stuff done trying to do catch up last year. Very small jobs, uh, but a lot of them, the volume coming in and out of here for the first six months of 2022 was massive. The amount of projects that were awarded and, and handled. Uh, there are things that are again going to uh, fall through the cracks. There are mistakes that are going to be made. When I, last time I managed maintenance, I got 100 work orders a week. That was average. And I could tell you on Monday morning at 9 a.m., I was going to blow three of them. I didn't know which three. That happens. On the other hand, 97% uh, accuracy is pretty good. Uh, but here the it's become a community sticking point on the playgrounds. And I think there are other ways to do that. Uh, if and I don't know your financial arrangements, corporately speaking. I think they were taking a more aggressive approach to solve the problem and then maybe track some of the legalities and stuff after the fact. Uh, may have been an approach I would have certainly looked at uh, if I was in the management team there. Uh, just because it's a, an ongoing community problem, community perception, I think some of the negative aspects about the parks and stuff is based on those issues, not on all the other parks where benches got painted, sod was replaced. Uh, having managed maintenance in the properties, it's very easy to cherry pick to this one, not knowing what all the other ones are and, and which ones have to be prioritized and why they have to be prioritized. Uh, and group think is not a way to manage uh, maintenance as well as uh, as uh, repairs and replacements, there needs to be a plan. It needs to be followed, and some things have to wait. And maintenance, that's the one thing you learn is it's not who you fix. It, how do I justify making this one wait? But nonetheless, I, I, I agree that there were problems with that. I'm not sure the exact answer, but I think it could have definitely been uh, handled more aggressively because it's frankly allowed to fester at this point. And it, reflects on a whole lot of the unhappiness there spills into other areas. And I, and I think if there's negative a community of comments, I think it's colored by that aspect of, of performance here. But I, was, I did not vote on you. I only got I participated in the way to, I only got to a certain point and then we turned it over and I didn't go to the interviews. I didn't go on the, on the bus rides to see the town. So I didn't select you. I was glad you were selected, uh, but I had nothing to do with it. My turn. Good to be here, Junior. Thank you. So of all of us sitting here, I have I have the most knowledge of the previous management company because I actually worked for them. And so I have a whole different perspective on on what's possible and what's not possible. I don't think anybody, including myself, is making excuses for grand manners, but sometimes stuff just happens. Yesterday, something popped up that was on nobody's radar. It had to do with the service areas. And I knew, I knew, you know, when that, that was told to me, I said, nah, uh, 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 because when I was here, we did, we hired a consultant to come in mm -hmm. and go through the um, supplements 
line by line by line. And I worked on that project as did the operations manager. And we had, you know, who was responsible for what in each service areas because they're not all the same. Five years, ago, three years ago, somebody redid it. So they all matched and they put it before the board and the board said, this looks good. You can't do that. You have to go by the documents. If you want to make them all the same, then you need to update the supplements. You don't just go by board vote. There were people that knew what was in their documents, right? And all of a sudden they're getting deemed for stuff and told, you know, well, that's your responsibility when it's not, according to their, so luckily I was able to find that document or tell them where to look for that document. So, you know, hopefully that will save them a lot of work. But I know that people are under the impression that, you know, everything should be fine by now, but things keep bubbling up constantly. Um, I think the staff here does a wonderful job. Um, they've had a turnover and I'm not sure the reason for that, I know they've had some trouble when we were looking for another accountant, uh, they couldn't find anybody who really wanted to come and work in an office. Everybody wanted to work you know, remotely. Nobody wanted to come to work. Um, you know, there's different reasons why people come and go and, you know, whatever. That doesn't help with regards to training, especially when you're talking about um, uh, inspectors. How many inspectors have we gone through in the last two years? Probably at least a half a dozen. Seven or eight. Yeah. So how many do we have now? Four. Yeah. But you know, when you have a revolving door like that, it's difficult to keep people trained, mm -hmm. you know, and up to speed. And then just but when you think that they're good to go, they decide they want to go work someplace else for more money. Or they don't like being out in a nev all day long. Or they don't like being approached by residents who are are chastising them for, you know, they see a clipboard and, you know, what are you doing? Why are you saying that? There's nothing wrong with it. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. So I don't, I'm not interrupting you, so I, I apologize for that. But the goal of this was to provide feedback to grant managers, and this is more of a lecture to residents of why things are okay, how they are. No, I'm just, well. It should be a conversation no. to grant manager staff. I understand that, but I'm responding to the statement that was made that we're making excuses. We're not. Just sometimes no matter how you how hard you try, there's things you can't control. And with that, I will stop. Charles, did you want to say anything else? Celia, you want to say something? So I, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say how much of this is on the board. Obviously, the management company works at the pleasure of the board. We are in chaos, right? It's a mess. We're in chaos. Yeah. You, you don't have to, yeah. you know, well. Um, but a good management company would persevere. A good management company would get through the day to day and find a way to get through these um, pain points and these challenges. And you know, as you look at when you when you came on board to where you are today, have you gotten better? I don't know. I don't. I, I think it's been you know, pretty consistent. Some areas have gotten better. Some have gotten worse. Um, but the trajectory is, uh, you know, it, it's it's tough to tell. And there are times where I just don't, I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I see just pointing at staffing. I see pointing at, we don't have enough manpower to do this. We don't have enough landscaping contractors. We don't have this. We don't have that. And it's a lot of excuses. It, it's a lot of excuses at the end of the day. Um, you know, we don't want perfection. We want progress. Someone actually, Kelly Walton, quotes that. Um, it, it's tough. It's very, very inconsistent right now. I'll be honest with you. When I, the community survey, I read every single comment in the community survey, and that hit me in the gut. Really, really hit me in the gut to read a lot of them. And that last question: Would you recommend Grand Manors? Over half the community. I think it ended up being around seventy percent. If you go back and um, normalize the other category. 600, there were 600 people, not half the community. So, which is a pretty good symbol, right? Well, pretty not, good. Not representative. Like we're not talking about sampling, but I'm saying you extrapolate. That's that's concerning. That's concerning feedback. And you can't dismiss the feedback. Right? That came directly from the statement of work. Um, you know, the, the feedback is valid. 
really valid and there's some serious concerns in there. And the action plan item, I, I'm going to really, really disagree on that and push back. We spent two weeks ago, we, during we had the whiteboard exercise, we tried to come up with a few things to, to try and help Grand Manners at the end of the day. And now we're being told that Grand Manners needs to come up with the action plan. I, I think that's the worst idea possible. We need to dictate the action plan. We need to tell Grand Manners what we need done and when we need it by. And this is serious. This really, really is. This is not acceptable. It really isn't. We insist on better. And if we don't get it, there are options. Okay, there are options. All right, nobody said the three letter word RFP. Okay, RFP is an option if we don't get these things fixed, if we don't get these things addressed, and we don't see progress. And I think that's what we want. We want to see progress. We want to see a commitment from corporate. We want to see Stacey, your comments were great. I, I appreciate that, but you got to be here. You, you got to be present. You got to have buy in on what we need fixed, and we need your support. Okay. At the end of the day, and you know, I would encourage you, we'll send you the surveys, we'll send you all the feedback. It's not a good story. It's not a good look. And Cindy, you know, going through this presentation and and scrubbing it, that just hurts grand manners at the end of the day. I don't think you realize yep. that a lot of that is self-inflicted. Yep. Charles, it really, no, hold on. I, wait, hold, but let hold. me tell you, I asked all of you in an email on Monday, is it okay with you if I share the comments with grand manners? Not one person mm -hmm. responded. Sure. My point is, and, and, and just to not to interrupt you, but we're, we're now we're bleeding into the to the um, resident part of the survey. No, I, I got it. My my point is, you went through. Gary took the time and the effort, and he brought the expertise. And I, and I get it, David and Bill. I, I understand where you're coming from with, with your perspective. But at the end of the day, Gary did this in probably the most independent, objective, unbiased way possible, and, and you scrubbed it. You basically took it and put your own spin on it. So you're telling the story to the community very differently. And this hurts Grand Manners. It hurts Grand Manners at the end of the day. Just tell the truth. Tell it like it is. And I think people will be more accepting of that. This is just, this really is not the way to do this. And and, and I think a lot of that was borne out in the survey and the feedback. And so, um, you know, my, my comments are I'm really disappointed. I, I think, again, I, I'm going to go back and say it again. The action plan needs to sit with the board. It should not be on Grand Manners to create the action plan. We should create the action plan. We should dictate what we want to do when we need it by and put a time frame in place. And that's it. Just to clarify what you're saying for a resident's comment, the, the, the recommendation of a 4 2 vote again is that Grand Manners come up with the action plan for what they should do to improve, not the board give Grand Manners a directive of what to improve. So that'll be coming up, but that's what Charles is referring to. And, you know, I just you. want to give perspective. No, I know. And if you were in the workshop a couple of weeks ago, we I thought we were generally aligned on that as we started kind of going through and you know identifying. Did you respond to Cindy's emails when she sent them out? No, I don't think so. Okay. Did, she, did he? Mm -hmm. I don't see how that's germane to what I'm talking it about. It is okay. because every time she sends an email asking for our advice. Okay, right. okay. We were we were okay. okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um and just to to wrap up and just to be Can clear, I, say something? Oh, I, I forgot that you said, yeah, but hurry up because we only have a half an hour. Try to okay. go ahead. Everybody, oh, we, we, we want to give the uh, faster, little resume sign. So, <laughs> so I echo what Bill says. Okay, I spoke to, I was talking in conversation with Charles. Yes, I came on board when this was going on. When I came on board, there was over 200 management companies that were part of this RFP process. When I got on the board, they had narrowed it down to 13. So, right, am I correct, Gary? Yes. There was a point where the RFP task force turned everything over to the board. We read a lot. It's hundreds and hundreds of pages on these management companies. And we toured the community and I saw what the community looked like. And you think it looks bad now. It doesn't look bad now. That's, I will say that the baseball field looks terrible. I will say that Lakeside looks terrible. And maybe that 
the landscaper needs to go or be put on notice, but you can't control the landscaper. We have gotten to the point in this community where we're making the playground define grand manners. Yes, that is on me and the board that approved that proposal. We weren't aware of how this was going on. This has been going on for 14 months. Yes, I'm part of that, but it's getting fixed. Thanks to Jared pushing and pushing and pushing. And if I filled out this survey in July, maybe if I did it now, or maybe if some of us did it now, it would be different because Lauren now has someone to support her here as the community manager. She didn't have that support with the previous community manager. I'm sorry, that's my that's how I feel. She she was running everything herself. So yeah, we have, I'm, I'm not interrupting you, but again, we're supposed to be giving grand manager I, feedback. And, I'm uh, talking about what's okay. leading up to this. She has a new boss that she answers to. We asked for this boss. Anything that we've asked for from grand manager up till now, they've given us. We asked for her boss to be replaced. They gave us Demetrius. Anything we've done, anything from July till now may be different. I, my pain point, and I'm going to use that word is, you sold us superior software and the software isn't superior. I'm sorry. Inspectors, as far as inspectors, I think you should be sending inspectors for the amount of inspectors that are turned over Lauren can't go out and inspect the houses with these people. You need to send inspectors from other communities that are established inspectors so that they can teach our inspectors how to do the inspection correctly. So that when the resident goes to a covenants meeting, they're not going crazy on, well, which side of the house needed to be done? Which shutter needed to be done? These inspectors need, need to be trained correctly. If we're gonna find our residents, it better be for a damn good reason. So that's my pain point. The inspectors software is always gonna be my pain point because that was supposed to make our covenants process as smooth as anything and it hasn't. But as far as the playgrounds, it's become a community where it's it's defining us. The play, I sent Lauren a text the other day from Lakeside, I said, gee, it's a good thing we didn't go for the third playground at Lakeside because we'd be we would have been down three playgrounds, but we did it. We kept Lakeside the way it is. She does everything she can to push and push until it gets done. Everything in the playground, the, the maintenance guys that they have low in the leaves every day at the playground. Everything is getting done. Those guys that were out there, how much more can they do? It's they're not a failure. And I'm sorry if you think that I'm always defending them, but I was put on the board when they first started and saw what this community looked like. I don't know if you saw what the community looked like, Charles, before they came on. I was only on the board a couple of months when they were gone, and we, we made them come on early because we lost an executive director, and they came on November 1st, and your, your, your anniversary is when? Right. They got the they got her hired in a matter of days, and it was unanimous. We we were a board that didn't get along back then, and we voted them in unanimously. So we did our homework, and they're trying everything we ask for. They give us. I I'm not saying you're saying they're not trying, but everything we've asked Stacy and Corbin for the last month or two in regards to the playground, in regards to Lauren's boss, they've come through and they have done everything that we've asked. Uh, have they or not? I would I would say no. The, the amount of effort it took to get those things, absolutely not, because you asked my opinion. There, there's proactive and there's reactive, right? And then there's... At the end of the day, Charles, you said it a, a couple of meetings ago. We're only in HOA. We're not 
Congress. We're not a Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get our community to the best that we can get it. And they are trying every single day. But but that's a cavalier attitude for this conversation. This is oh, know, so in one conversation we're we're only in HOA and in this conversation we're not. Okay. okay. We're, we're talking about the management company that manages our homeowner value. That's right. A little bit of a different conversation. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Uh, and just so everybody else overall, are the 10 things for this section? Grand Manor scored at least three and everything except finance, accounting, cash management, and contract procurement and oversight. That was 2.9 and 2.6 respectively. So moving on to the, I have to kind of zip through these, the community survey. And I, Earl, I apologize, I took your comments out of there again, because I'm trying to move the, the meeting along. And I found a couple of things that you had cited that weren't really Grand Manor's responsibility. Before you do that, I just want to note that I pulled every 30th or 35th row. Those were not, I was not looking for keywords. I was not looking, and in fact, there were okay. positive comments. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there were, yeah. Just but pulling them, pocketing them, and well, they've been removed. I, I can say it, but yeah, well, because one of them had to do with a parking lot at a condo association, which we have nothing to do which with. Which highlighted that also there's some education gaps, but carry on. Yeah, but I mean, so that's why, and again, I wanted to try to move through this. So moving on to the community survey. And you can go to the, you can go, to, go ahead and go to the next one, Lauren. It's just explaining how many people, there's 632 respondents, I think. So the first one is technology. Um, majority of people were neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. that one the satisfied and dissatisfied were almost equal and then you see it goes down from either side the next slide with communications most people were satisfied but again dissatisfied is right up there with them either satisfied or dissatisfied is somewhere in the middle a little bit below Um, website. Again, majority of people either satisfied or dissatisfied. Again, dissatisfied and satisfied, kind of close. And of course, you have on the, you know, the, on the other end of the spectrum, but you can see just what I can. Social media, either agreeing or disagree. Again, agree and disagree are kind of close. Neither disagree is on the, the high end. Opinion, however you want to call it. Next is customer service. Very, very dissatisfied on the customer service. Although closely by dissatisfied. The comments will help you engage that. Uh, professionalism. Uh, most people are satisfied. Next is neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. Dissatisfied people outnumber the very satisfied. Very dissatisfied outnumber the very satisfied. Yeah. Covenants, very dissatisfied. Um, Dissatisfied, neither satisfied, it's, everything is on the negative end on that one, pretty much. Let's see by the graphs. ARC, neither satisfied or dissatisfied has the highest. And then the dissatisfied and very dissatisfied take over that side. Next. Custodial services. Most people are satisfied. But then there's some that are very dis it goes from satisfied to very dissatisfied. On the part. So next is general maintenance. That's another very dissatisfied. 
and dissatisfied outweigh everything else? Last was recreation. That has to do with um, the amenities, not so much the uh, lifestyle and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, again, very dissatisfied. Dissatisfied and satisfied are about equal. The neither is right in the middle there. So these are the these are the responses from the Survey Monkey survey with the residents. Um, there were two more questions, as uh, Jared and Charles mentioned before. They were open ended. Um, what's your status? Uh, Tell us how you feel about Grand Manor's performance, you know, to date, mm -hmm. um, open-ended. Uh, and also uh, a yes or no, would you recommend them to somebody else? Um, those you did not fare well on. But a, a lot of it, um, well, we will send it to you so you can read it for yourself. And I'm not going to, um, I tried, <laughs> when I first saw the results, I tried to, because there's pages and pages and pages and pages. Some some people wrote very dissatisfied or and then others, really expounded on the whys and the wherefores and what about this and what about that. And I tried to kind of categorize it, but there were too many, too many to do that with. So um, you may find out a way to do that and kind of get a handle on it, but. Um, um, I actually right. did that and categorized everything to positive, negative, neutral, and no feedback. Uh, the neutral people were people who made a comment that didn't relate like a CBD thing or something that is not even accurate with what grant manager will be responsible for. And the nuns will be letting no comments. And that, that positive, positive and negative, dropping the neutral and the none, those ratios are 16% positive, 16% yes, and 84% no. Wow, you got a lot harder than I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And I can share that as well. Some, if, some of those were a little bit. I'm sure a lot of those. I'm sure a lot of those comments, when you go back um, from the residents in regards to the amenities or the playgrounds in those comments. Every comment is relevant. I know. Every every comment is important from the residents. This is their feelings. Yeah. But like I said, the playgrounds have seemed to define us in our community. Mm -hmm. They have. And to, thanks to Jack, I'm thanking Jared for being persistent as he has been. And we're moving along. But if you look at those comments, you'll see most of them are related to the playgrounds. Not true. Okay. I must. Be you read all those comments. So yes, I, I did. Some, okay. They're not. Um, to, to what's already been said, hindsight is 2020. When Grand Manners first came on board, I think it's safe to say that that board was all about fixing, fixing the squeaky wheels first. And a lot of that had to do with the passive parks. Lauren, off the top of your head, do you remember how many passive parks we touched those first several months after Grand Manners got here? Um, I know we were proving a bunch of stuff. I know in 2022 there were between 2022 and the beginning of 2023, there were over 300 projects. In 300 the, pro yeah. in the passive. But those were all like on the passive parks and whatever. The only time you would know that is if you lived there because nobody goes around and looks at 64 passive parks. So, yeah, except for you, but. <laughs> Do, yeah, Mari. Yeah, I, well, I know, but I mean, most people don't. In retrospect, probably what we should have done was the, the pools and the playgrounds first, and then worried about the passive. You know, they did, did a little bit towards the passive parks. You know, if somebody like, uh, what was that, um, Central Park, that was really bad. You know, if something like that came up, fix it. But really, probably, inside retrospect, whatever, what we probably should have done was concentrated on the larger amenities. You know, but, you know, I wanted to put up signs that say, when we were doing all the passive parks that said great things happening here. So at least people that would go by would see that we were doing something. 
And then, you know, it's been you know, two and a half years, you know, people forget. So anybody so, else want to, uh, and we will share all those, you know, comments with you. Um, anybody? Where do we go from here? I, I think, I, and I'll with respect to Charles, um, there are things added to the to the action items and stuff that we did not talk about, and you and I weren't able to connect to talk about that, which is why I thought it'd be a good idea to table it. Plus, I think Rand Manners should be aware of all the comments so they can really see what's involved and come back to us and say, you know, we can fix this yesterday. You know, this is going to take us some time. You know, we didn't know this was an issue. You know, this is this is how we're going to approach it, and you know, with the timeline and everything. Hopefully, you know, before our next meeting, which is the 29th, if you think that's possible. You think yes. just so we have a couple days before, and then we can, you know, you can put together like, like I said, the you know, we can fix this right now. We didn't know this was an issue. You know, this is going to take some time, but we can do it. Kind of a timeline. You know, how you're going to approach it, and then let us. Have a couple of days to digest it before the meeting and see if we want to add anything to it or say, you know, this isn't going to work for us. You know, to us, this is priority. What can you do to, to speed it up? Is that what do you think, everybody? No, I disagree. No, we're responsible for resource management, resource allocation, not grant matters. We need to dictate the action plan. We need to dictate the resources that we have and how we want this action plan to look. I, I know I'll be up, we'll be upvoted on this. I'll be upvoted on this. So I, I, I'll just say for the record, I disagree that letting a contractor write their own performance evaluation plan, uh, action plan is the most ridiculous professional thing I've ever heard. Go ahead. That's, I don't agree that that's what we asked them to do. We're not asking them to evaluate themselves. We've already done that. No, action plan, I said. The action plan should be theirs because they're the only one that know how it, what's going to take. Uh, how long would it take us to write an action plan? Because it took us four or five months to get this uh, master plan advisory group going. So how long would it take us to come up with an action plan for them? Uh, it's their problem to solve. We hired them to solve the problems. They're the professionals. They know how to solve the problem. We're giving them all the information they need. And they'll, they'll know what to do. And if you can't do it, you'll let us know. David? I have a different take on this. I think it was six months ago, maybe with Gary, seven, eight. The discussion was, we have a three-year contract with Grand Manors. That is scheduled to end at the end of October of 24. Knowing how long it took to do an RFP process, we need to have some discussion sooner rather than later. Let's not wait till September of 24 to talk about whether we renew the contract. We need to be starting that discussion sooner rather than later. That led to let's get a take on what the board thinks. And then after that was the resident piece, which brought us to today, which is basically a year before, because that whole RFP process done right and done superbly well, a la a model in one person's view, takes a long time to do it right. Or we could just throw one together. So the, the hot, the high level question is, are we thinking about not renewing an RFP a year, or not renewing a contract a year from now? Are we thinking about renewing a contract? General discussion, that's not a vote. At some point there will need to be a formal discussion, but what is the sense? Separately in personnel reviews that many of us who have had, I've had up to 200 employees, uh, Many of us do performance reviews, and then we do corrective action plans or whatever, you know, or you say you know, you're on probation or you need to fix this and so forth. So I think we're at the point of 
and I mean this in a positive way, a high level discussion. There's lots of specifics, 141 items, resident input. And so my sense that it, with that context is, I'd like to hear back from management, what is your thinking about this and what are you gonna do about these areas? Some of which are were presented here and some of which are not hidden, but they're, they're in the 30 page Gary Hudspeth report and in the resident comments. To me, resident comments are important, but if I look at the way the, you know, the hot topics of the resident comments, they don't cover everything in the scope of work. They cover where the resident connects with staff. And that's important. And if we as board are rating something four or five or 3.2 and the residents are all panning it, something's wrong with that, with our disconnect. I mean, if we had unanimous opinion on I don't X or Y or Z, and the resident is going, you must be kidding. We gotta, we gotta talk. We gotta listen differently. We gotta get the pulse differently. So my sense is I would like to hear back from management. I don't know that two weeks is sufficient. I'm, I'm not proposing a timeline. I don't want, don't think this should wait too long, but a reasonable amount of time. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna deal with this big picture and some of the little picture and and separately, we as a board can think about strategic planning. I think that's, I don't think the question of what's your action plan and you're defining everything for us. I don't think that's what you're doing. You're responding to the feedback that you're hearing for the first time. You're hearing it and you're going to digest it. You're going to see things that it's like, I can't believe someone would say that, or I'm really concerned about this. Boy, nobody talked about it and I'm really concerned about it. So I'm interested in what you have to say, high level, mid level, as local, as uh, low level as you want. And then I think it's up to the board then to say, hey, that really meets it. And then we can start to answer that RFP question because do we need to get the balls rolling or not? I mean, I have a strong sense of what to do and what not to do in that regard. But I think that's the question which brought us from our discussion six months ago to this meeting tonight. So that's my take. And to this evaluation, the board was supposed to do this last October, but there was so much, there was so much. Oh, a, a, a mid-course about a, a yes. one-year evaluation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never did it, so. That was self-imposed. Right, Yeah. you were gonna be on the, mm -hmm. as the liaison. There was a couple of liaisons, but we had two board members that resigned. So There's too much going on. Back on, on the back burner, so. Yeah, it's way too much going on. Right. So that was never done. And this was done in July, and now we're already in November, a year out from the. But no, I think we're, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Can we hear from Gary? Yeah. Yes. Gary's been patient. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, Gary. Thank you. Gary Hutzmuth, I was the chairman of the RFP task force. I guess you've heard my name. David, you've got the right approach, and thank you for that conversation. Uh, I can only vouch for the first seven slides. The data that I'm familiar with is the board's evaluation because that's contractual with Grand Manors. That's where the attention should play in. And David's right. The connection between the residents and Grand Manors is a different perception. So I'm only familiar with the statement of work, which we can relate directly to because that's what the board evaluated you on. So what's missing from the presentation is the 37 elements that were evaluated by the board as less than performance was less than uh, met the statement of work. There were only 15 slides and it took that 37 less than 3.0. And the question that I wanted the board to ask Grand Manners was, here's the specific item the board evaluated as less than 3.0, what do you think we should do together to make that better? You haven't even seen those yet. What you've seen is all the good stuff and a very poor uh, evaluation from the residents. It is what it is. I would like the board to uh, send my report, which is strictly the numbers, of all 141, this is that 31-page report. It's dated July. 
and that's when the board had it. This covers all 37 items that are missing from the presentation tonight. That's what I would like Graham Manners to address first. If you address those, I think you'll also be addressing some of the perceptions of the residents. But you're, the most important part is you're addressing the contractual relationship between you and Graham. So please send a list, not the presentation. Yes, no, send absolutely. The list. Yeah, raw material. Yeah. yeah. And they're getting the resident comments also, yeah. correct? Oh, yeah. That's so that's that. That. Right. Is that comments, the comment, the board right. comments are in this thing there? I will tell you, though, you'll be surprised. There were preciously few resident board comments. Yes, there were. There <laughs> wasn't very many. You're not going to glean a lot from that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to relate between your contract, the statement of work, which is a staple to the back of the contract, and try to figure out, which I hope the board was going to discuss, but they ran out of time. Why does it read 2.5, 2.6, 2.9, whatever? I will give one out of boys. There was only one element that was ranked 4.0, and it was IT. Congratulations to Jose and his yeah. two person team. Thank you for that, Gary, because I noticed that too. I just didn't think to say it. Thank you. But you Thank see you, what Gary. missing? They don't even know what the 37 elements mm -hmm. are that were graded exactly. for them. Yeah. No, I'm well, no one of them because I, vo I voiced it, Gary. Yes. <laughs> and it falls into two categories, covenants and contractual mm -hmm. contracts. Mm -hmm. It's helpful. Hi, so I know we're almost we're coming at 8 o'clock. We've only time. Just between me and dinner. Um, I'm gonna make a couple of comments. I'm not I'm not going to preach, but I'm gonna to try to help with getting your arms around this thing a little bit. Okay, from my perspective, from my experience, I've got a lot of experience and a lot of gray hair. So need that help. <clears throat> First, Gary did a great job of prioritizing for you just now and steering you towards the symptoms that are probably the worst. Okay, so that's that's where everybody needs to focus. I think that's your agenda, those items. And remember in the feedback of the community results, I use the term whack-a-mole. Remember, Charles started to laugh and started nodding his head. Yeah, whack-a-mole. And you can get caught up in that. I mean, this, this has got plenty of ammunition that's gonna create a whack-a-mole mode here. And you can keep whacking at all those symptoms, but you're not going to solve the problem. You'll burn a lot of energy and a lot of time. If you focus on that small batch that Gary said, I think that's a reasonable whack-a-mole game that you might be able to win. Certainly can make some progress with that. But I think it's I think the the need is bigger. And I think this is where Grand Manners can help. And that's with employee training and development. This is a problem with capability within a team to do things. And we're talking about the things that are not getting done right. And we're not talking about how are we gonna invest in the people to make them better, to help eliminate this. That's the source of this. Make no mistake, that is the source of this. I know we all wanna say we have a great team and everything else, I'm not judging that. But when you see symptoms like this, there's some opportunities there. And every team has opportunities. When things come up, I was taking notes. When things come up like accuracy, accountability, being proactive, ownership, communication, quality control, professionalism. I mean, these are all competencies that people have that manifest themselves in their work. And if they don't have the proper skills, training, opportunities, support in those areas, they're not gonna perform well. So when we say, what can Grand Manners do? I don't know how much has been invested. You did some sign-on bonuses. How much has been invested in training and development? How much skill training there is? Just basic skills, attention to detail, follow-through, all those things. I think that's got as much promise as trying to play whack-a-mole. But if you narrow it down to that small group, um, I'd throw everything else behind that. Grand Manners, in my opinion, can do anything. It's in that area. 
we used to have a saying we got caught up in business and different things um, and got confused about how to do things, how to lead. And the saying is something like, you need to take time to work on the business and not in the business. And some of you have maybe heard that before, but it's a good course corrector because when you're working in the business and you've got your head down, you're playing whack-a-mole and you're doing all those things, you burn out a lot of energy, but you're not solving problems. You're not moving the ball forward. You got to step back from it. You got to work on the business. I heard a lot of working in the business tonight. Okay. Some people, some leaders have to be working on the business. Some people have to be finding ways to invest in the team. And I think Grand Matters can lead in that area. I think Grand Matters should lead in that area. I think that's your job to support Lauren with seminars, skill trainings, whatever it is. But that's really what will change the game. Thanks for listening. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Gary. Thank everybody who's here. Um, so I think we're going to give you an opportunity to come back to us. Right after yeah. you get, we'll get all that information out to you. Like tonight, maybe when I get home. Mm -hmm. If, if I could respond to this, right? because, because I, I absolutely heard, I heard what you said, Jared, and I heard Charles and, of course, all the rest of the board. That the, that the idea behind getting the feedback will allow us to see what those items are and be able to come back and say, we've already addressed perhaps some of those things, and here is what we have done. And here's what either we can do or we will need to partner with the board to invest in making these things happen. So it's not a matter of evaluating. I mean, we've heard how we were evaluated this evening. And I, for one, and I'm sure I'm speaking for Corbin and Demetrius and, and Lauren and Jeffrey, are, we are we're grateful and appreciative to hear this because just speaking in, you know, just philosophically, but putting this situation aside, most of us go through life, right? thinking everything is fine and rosy until you hear from somebody else you are in a relationship with, whether it be personal or professional, that this isn't working and here's why. Otherwise, we think everything's fine, right? So I'm, I'm again, very grateful to hear this feedback. And I would like the opportunity for us to view the what, what you all have put uh, in writing and be able to come back and give you some things that we have already done or can do or work together to solve for it. So that's really the opportunity I would like us to have uh, because, and I, I used to run the net promoter system for first service residential. I'm very well versed in surveys, feedback, interpretation, looking at themes, but frankly, numbers don't tell you anything other than sentiment, which is great. But until you understand the context behind it, there's no action you could really put into place. And so I, I really do and want that that opportunity for us to take that next step uh, and work towards making some hopeful quick progress. And then if we need long term action planning, then we'll work on that together. So thank you. And, and thank you all for your comments as well. And for those who are still on the uh, team's call, thank you for being here. So I don't know if that this conversation has changed your mind, Jared, or your mind, Charles. No, Charles. At all, Charles. Um, but I think. Well, what happens if the action plan comes back and we? So what is that going to look like? I guess we don't know what it's going to look like. They have it, it'll be a co yeah. absolute collaborative conversation, as as mm -hmm. you and I have had even discussions. Sure. This is a relationship mm -hmm. versus a you know just transactional uh, vendor situation, right? We want to work right together with the board. So if if what we propose is a, a hard stop or a no, that's fine. Let's talk through that, right? I'd be appreciative of on your plan, if not the initial pass, putting some timelines on it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And some things it may be pending discussion with the board, right? Because we can't do it some things without your decision. Yeah. But my only comment, since this is, it is what it is, but what we tried to do when we were in the last workshop was we were identifying things that can be operationalized tomorrow, right? Not gonna cost us additional resources, not gonna bring on additional people, 
things we can just start incremental progress and things that we're, we need to get together and talk. We need to have some board conversation and board action. And then the longer term strategic initiatives. So yeah. let's get different opinions on this, but I think that's really important, right? We need to operationalize things pretty quickly. So if, as you go through that process, I think that's important. Identifying what, what can be done tomorrow, what are the low hanging fruits, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then obviously the things that we want to avoid those, right? <laughs> We need some planning and some longer term conversations around those. So, again, that was my my concern about the resources. Like mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, should be coming from us. But alas, that's where we are. Sure, sure. And and if there are, again, that's that is a time, money, and people discussion. Mm -hmm. We have to have the discussion together, right? Uh, and I know there may be some things even tonight. If if we had want to stick around for a minute or two, that Lauren brought to uh, to the team's attention of things that we have already made some quick progress on and things that are going to be implemented in the very near future, if not already have been implemented. So I, I don't know if we have time for that or if no, you want to over take. We're all, I'm, I'm done. You're done? Okay. okay. I have that's some fine. Eat. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, I think it's part of the discussion. We that we'll the provide plan. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. We're happy to do that. Happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. Again, thank you very thank much. You. All right. So you'll work on that. As soon as we get the information, I'll do what we I will. Hold. Yeah, we will take a look at how voluminous it is. Oh, yeah, and then provide you with a realistic time frame. Okay, you just yeah. copy what information is sent on the whole board. Are, are you sending me? No, Cindy. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, but I'm just going to send her what we were sent. Yeah, I'd like I'm not going to be copying that. Okay, I can do that. And, and, I'll my, send my, and my response will be back to the entire board as well. Okay. And if when I send it, if I've forgotten something, please somebody let me know. But I, I put it all in one file, so I should be able just to zip, zip, zip down. Okay. Very good. Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Bill? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Hey, you really need to start eating early later. It's one. You really need to start eating later on board meetings.